Hi everyone, it's Elizabeth from Alpus Astrology at alpusastrology.com. Thanks for joining me today. So today I am going to do my video on my take of the astrology for December 2023. And I will do the sun signs and ascendants uh, towards the end of the video. You can always look in the chapters if you want to go directly there. And certainly this might be a good month to book um, an astrology reading with me or even give it as a gift. Uh, just contact me through email and we can arrange something. All right, let's get on with the, the month here of December. So the lucky thing that I thought, uh, or beneficial thing that I thought was great is two things. We have the sun in Sagittarius for most, most of the month of December, and we have Jupiter literally at the end of the month, the ruler of Sagittarius going direct. And so I think I really felt there was some kind of, um, it's almost like there's a protection here and potentially some benefits here as well, just generally speaking in this month. Although there are going to be a lot of things initiated at this month, we may not see them till January and February next year. And I'll discuss that uh, with you as we go through this month uh, astrology. All right, so we have... Um, Venus is going to be in Scorpio most of this month, so that gives Venus a tone of being very deep with her emotions. Um, she can, you know, feel things at a sort of ethereal level or an intuitive level as well. So that's the other thing that we've got going ongoing for most of the month too, right? Is that type of thing. And then of course Venus in Scorpio is opposite anything in Taurus, and of course we know that we've got... Um, Uranus there, uh, as well as Jupiter. Now, on the 5th of December, we have that Venus is going to be trining Saturn nicely. So this gives um, sort of a favorable energy with regards to potentially having uh, more enduring factors put into, say, a deep relationship. Now, Scorpio can also have to do with other people's money. So this could also reflect uh, some of us deciding to do something favorable with regards to saving our money, for instance. There may be more in the collective, um, you know, initiatives put in place with regards to helping us save our money. Um, and, you know, I almost get this impression of our money uh, working hard for us, right? Because it's a trine. Also on that 5th of December, um, actually it's going to be the next day on the 6th, uh, we have Neptune going direct. Well, that's excellent. And that's going to be at 24 Pisces, 53 minutes. And I like that because one of the uh, enduring energies uh, with regards to an aspect I'm going to talk in a minute, which is the Mercury retrograde in December, has to do with that whole uh, Neptune and Neptune squaring. Um, Mercury when it goes into Sagittarius uh, as part of the retrograde going direct uh, in January. So I think that's positive that we have Neptune going direct. I mean, we may literally have poof, like <laughs> secrets revealed, uh, any deceptive stuff that's been going on all of a sudden becomes clear to everybody. That type of thing could happen too. We have just before that, we have um, on the 4th of December, Venus, just before it goes into Scorpio, will be squaring Pluto. And so this can bring in, I mean, that's Venus now in, in Libra, right? The last degree of Libra, 29 degrees, squaring Pluto. Um, I would say that this could have to do something with diplomatic relations, could be at the fore. Uh, certainly if you are involved in any relationship, and relationship, I'm speaking more of a serious relationship like a marriage, um, there may be something that comes up with regards to a challenge where you're required to somehow transform that relationship. Um, and it is a challenge. It's not that difficult. But it may involve you letting go of the old way of doing things and embracing something new, right? Because that Pluto is soon to go full time, right? For 20 years into Aquarius. But right now, it's at the latter degrees, of course, of Capricorn. This could also have something to do with our money. Um, where maybe there's, uh, I'm thinking, you know, with Venus in Libra and l potential laws and things like that, maybe there's going to be new laws put in with regards to those people in power uh, regarding our money. Mm -hmm. 
This could also reflect diplomatic relations and just bring some challenges to diplomatic relations with each of those parties in power. So this is all early on in December. I'm talking about these aspects, right? But let's look at that first lunation that we have. It's going to be a new moon in Sagittarius. Um, it is going to be on the 12th of December um, at 32, 3.32 p.m. Pacific Standard Time um, at 20 uh, Sagittarius, 40 minutes. Um, so, you know, that's the new moon for all Sagittarians. I am a Sagittarian sun. And so I guess happy birthday to me. <laughs> um, anyway, for all my clients and viewers that are Sagittarians, this is your new year, your new start, right? So happy new year to you, Sagittarius. Some of the aspects we have happening at this new moon in Sagittarius is that Mars will also be in your sign. Now it's going to be at 13 degrees, so it's not going to be conjunct. But still it's adding, adding to me, um, or at least increasing that potential for jovial energy, right? Because Sagittarius tends to be very jovial and optimistic and, and likes to give us gifts and benefits. And with Mars there, it's just activating that whole thing. So we could see around this 12th of December, you know, in the collective, most people are really feeling the holidays, feeling more optimistic, feeling buoyant, feeling generous uh, with this aspect happening. Now it also, uh, uh, that whole uh, moon and sun, because it's a new moon in Sagittarius, is going to be trining the North Node. So this, this new moon is shaping up to be quite significant. And we're just starting to get into the aspects here. That trine the North Node is really saying favorable energy for us to see what our destiny path as a collective for sure. Now, if you have anything aspecting, say from uh, 19 degrees of Sagittarius, let's take it all the way through to 22 degrees of Sagittarius. This new moon is going to be more than just um, your regular new moon in the year Sagittarius, rising and or sun sign. So pay attention to what happens. If you do have uh, anything happening around those degrees I've just mentioned in Sagittarius, and to some extent also in Gemini, pay attention to what happens all around this new moon in Sagittarius. Like I said, it's the 12th of December. All right, so we talked about the North Node trying. Uh, we also have that Mars in Sagittarius trying Chiron too, because you know Chiron is in uh, Aries, fellow fire sign. So that brings a lot of uh, real healing. It's like a healing balm, right? Um, and that's B-A-L-M. Um, the other thing we have is Venus uh, in Scorpio now is going to be opposite Jupiter. Well, that's fabulous too. Now this can bring in, for some folks that are open for it, um, a very deep... Um, sensual potential love interest could come in at this time. But if we look practically and talk about our money, that Venus can also bring in money potentially for some of us as well. It's a Venus opposite uh, Jupiter, but these are the two benefics. You really are going to have to work hard to get a negative aspect out of Jupiter, and especially in relation with uh, its uh, compatriot uh, Venus, right? So this could bring in money for some folks, bring in love for others. Um, you could also, some, some folks could also have some kind of real increase in their value for, for some reason. Maybe they get more money, maybe they get a bonus around this uh, 12th of December uh, because somebody in the company really values them. We have Mercury that's going to be sextile Venus as well. So this is positive, um, beneficial messages coming your way around that new moon. We also have a yod that's happening. Now, the yod has two sort of anchor points. It's like a triangle that lead up to pointing at a specific angle and or planet, right? And in this case, this yod has at its base the south node at 23 degrees of Libra, and it has um, the new moon, as well as the sun, of course, at 20 degrees of Sagittarius, and they're pointing up there to Uranus at 20, 20 degrees of Taurus. Well, this is also saying what? We have to let go of that south node, right? It's time 
to put a new start in, in letting go of that south node in Libra. And so we go back to that whole thing about what is Libra about. And Libra can reflect things like our social mores. It can represent socializing for that matter, um, on a more superficial level, of course. Um, it can also represent diplomacy. But at its core, really, Libra speaks about harmony, justice, um, peace, equality, that type of thing. So it's saying here that in order for us to go ahead with our future, that's the Sagittarius part at the bottom, we have to let go of the way we're doing all those things I've just mentioned with Libra. And we have to do it now <laughs> because that Uranus likes to act right away. So I expect there's going to be some kind of things happening. And certainly if you have something around these degree points, um, let's go back to that whole um, new moon. Again, if you've got anything between 19 and say 22 degrees of Sagittarius, that yacht's going to be activated in your chart too. Now, the big thing that's going to be happening on this new moon, uh, especially for Pacific time, is that Mercury uh, will go retrograde in Capricorn. So it's going to go retrograde and forward again in two signs, starting off with Capricorn, then going into Sagittarius. So that Mercury goes retrograde around 8 degrees of Capricorn on the 12th of December at that new moon, but it's at 11.10 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So obviously on the East Coast, it's going to be the next day into early morning. I did a whole video on this. I, I put the link here down below. It might be worth your while to take a look at it. I really go into, dig into a lot of the detail um, and the actual story uh, that starts at this new moon in Sagittarius on the 12th of December, that goes right the way through uh, February for sure of 2024. So I would suggest you do that, is take a look at the video to get more details of how this Mercury retrograde may affect us collectively as well as you individually, okay? On the 17th of December, we have that square to Neptune that I spoke about um, is going to be affecting um, the Mercury part of it when it goes into Sagittarius. So we've got the Sun in Sagittarius squaring that uh, Neptune. Now the good thing is Neptune's going to be direct. So I would look at the 17th of December as, you know, I would say some people in power, maybe a specific man being highlighted with regards to some kind of deception, some confusion, um, maybe some um, like fogginess. I'm getting this idea of, you know, fogging things up so you can't really see what's really going on. Smoke and mirrors. That's what I'm thinking here. Smoke and mirrors, but it may come through directly a man. A man can be represented by the sun, certainly when we look from the collective standpoint. That's on the 17th of December. On the 21st of December, we have that Venus again, it's still in Scorpio, is going to be opposite Uranus. So for those of us open to a potential zing connection love-wise, that's classic stuff with this Venus opposite Uranus here. Um, and it could be a real big attraction here because that uh, Venus is a Scorpio. It could be almost like a karmic like uh, energy where you feel drawn to somebody uh, and this could happen in an instant. We'll talk about Venus opposite Uranus. We're talking about, you know, going to a party, opening up the door, walking in and you see this, this person from across the room and you instantly hit it off. You know, um, you just go to an ordinary event and you turn around and bump into this person that you're totally attracted to. So that certainly can happen. The other thing this can be tied in with, of course, is again our money. Because the Scorpio element as well as the uh, Taurus element is represented here. This could bring in some kind of um, wake-up call with regards to our money systems, our money, generally speaking. Um, and certainly if you have something, say, around the 19-20 um, degree mark of either Scorpio or Taurus, um, you may have some, you know, wake-up call with regards to your money and or you may, you know, instantly fall in love with someone or be attracted to someone. Uh, right away. Now on the negative side, uh, this can bring in, um, you know, this decision that seems sort of unexpected and um, 
uh, instantaneous to let go of a love. So that could also happen here for some folks where you just make the decision, I've had enough, and you say, okay, we're done. That could come in here too. I don't get it as a strong element, but you know, it is Venus opposite Uranus. All right, so the 25th and 26th, that is around that Christmas time period, uh, we will have Mars at 22 degrees of Sagittarius. Now the important point of that particular aspect is that in the 1st of January, we're going to have that whole Mercury that's retrograde go or station direct. And it will be at that 22 degree mark of Sagittarius. So this says to me that some action, um, and at an individual level, maybe some action that you take, um, or an action that occurs around that time, could, have, um, could come out into the open. That's what I'm thinking here. Why come out into the open? because we're talking about that same degree point of 22 Sagittarius being the degree point that Mercury goes direct on the 1st of January. Um, I don't see this as necessarily negative singly on its own. To me, this is just some energy to become more generous, like you literally put that energy Mars into Sagittarian type things, and we're saying generous people, um, gift-giving people, but it can also bring, you know, a lot of energy to us looking at our future. Now, this can play out on a collective level as well as an individual level. And when we look at Sagittarius, we also remember that this represents foreign lands and foreign people. So there may be some real big initiative go on with regards to foreign lands and foreign people also at this time that really comes out in maybe something more... Um, newsworthy in writing or in someone speaking about it when Mercury goes direct, starting on the 1st of Jan. It doesn't mean it's going to happen on the 1st of Jan. It just means that at that point, the 1st of January, that whole Mercury is now going forward and can start speaking, writing, and broadcasting whatever it is uh, that that initiative uh, for our future uh, represented. Um, on the 25th and 26th of December. Okay, so the next big lunation we have is the full moon in Cancer. And you know, a lot of times we have that full moon in Cancer in January, uh, but this year we have it in December. And so that's gonna be the next day after Christmas, uh, certainly Pacific time. So the 26th of December, that full moon in Cancer will be at for Cancer, uh, 58 minutes, that's almost 5 degrees of Cancer at 4.33 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I mostly like this full moon in Cancer. Um, it sextiles Jupiter in um, Taurus. The Sun, because the full moon, the Sun is in the opposite sign, the Sun will um, trine uh, Jupiter in Taurus. And then we're going to have the Sun sextile Saturn. The Moon will trine Saturn. So these are all kind of setting up nice energies with regards to favorable structures that we need to put in place as we look at our future. I mean, typically this is classically the time that we do look at the following year, right? The end of December kind of represents that whole time period. We say, well, what have we done this year? Let's look back and then look forward to, well, what are we going to do next year? Certainly using this whole uh, Julian calendar, right? Positively, um, Mars will try on the North Nodes as well. Again, bringing us um, positive energy, flowing energy to get us on a destiny path. Um, now, kind of negatively, uh, we've got that Mercury is retrograde, of course, at this full moon, and it is going to be exactly square Neptune, along with Mars squaring Neptune, hmm. along with um, a conjunction with um, Mars as well. So, mm, Mercury and Mars... I think this is some kind of sub subversive action um, and subversive 
messages as well. Um, just clustering those squares together. Um, I see this as subversive action and deceit potentially coming in here. It's also a clash with what? A clash with our spiritual values, with our beliefs, um, anything in that realm uh, is going to be challenged here, where there's going to be disagreements, right? And there's going to be disagreements probably, and there, these may be voiced as well. On the positive side, with that Neptune, which is going direct, remember, Venus will be trining that Neptune. So this is super positive too. Now, Venus trying Neptune can bring in this lovely soulmate energy, right? But the other thing that that Venus trying Neptune can do is take some of the edges. So Venus um, likes to be sweet. It likes to make things um, pleasant. So it's positive that we've got with the squares to Neptune that we also have Venus trying Neptune. And I see this as kind of like that, that peacekeeper, you know, whether it's on an individual level or whether it's on a collective level, really stepping up and adding some sweetness and pleasantness um, and ideas for peace, despite the differences in uh, beliefs and spiritual values at this full moon in Cancer. Right, when we get to literally the end of December, so the 31st of December, we have lovely Jupiter. And remember, Jupiter is the ruler of that new moon in Sagittarius that I spoke about. And it is also the ruler of that Mercury going direct at 22 Sagittarius on the 1st of January. I'll speak a lot more about that, of course, in my January uh, video. But I just want to remind you, please go into the video that I made about the retrograde uh, details. I think you might find it interesting. So it's terrific that we have at the end of the month, you know, 31st of December, a lot of us are going to be having some kind of celebration for New Year's. This just brings up the happiness level, the positive um, level happiness with regards to our future, right? Sagittarius does definitely refer to our future. It has us feeling generous at this time. Generous and happy and positive about our future. Um, it will be at five um, Taurus and it will be widely sextiling Saturn. Saturn is at uh, three degrees of um, Pisces at this time, but it's there, right? So this then sets up uh, potential opportunities to set up structures especially with regards to things like our, um, you know, our spirituality, um, anything to do with metaphysical thing. Our compassion could also be at a high level for those. Um, I think that is something here, yeah. A compassion um, increases, that's the Sagittarius part going direct, uh, in all of us towards the end of this year to those less fortunate, right? Because that also can be represented by Pisces here. All right, let's move on to the sun signs and or ascendants. I say read or listen to whichever one resonates with you. I like to do the ascendant. It seems to be that it's a little more accurate when I do clients, etc. But hey, sometimes we find reading or listening to the sun sign works for you better. Listening to both is probably a good idea. Okay. All right, Pisces. So that new moon in Sagittarius squares your sign. Yeah. And that new moon in Sagittarius widely squares Neptune, which is also in your sign. So this could provide some challenges to you for sure. Um, you just may decide that, you know, you've got to deal with some things that you've not dealt with. Maybe some things that um, not necessarily purposely were hidden from you, but maybe things that you were not looking at carefully. Maybe you were not looking carefully at something uh, that seemed too good to be true, right? I mean, that's the other thing that could happen here. One, two, three, four, five, eight, nine, ten. 
Yeah. Um, your career could also, you know, be providing some challenges to you because that new moon squares that 10th house, right? So uh, I would say that I'm putting this out towards, you know, kind of the mid-November time period. Think about maybe what potentially could come up in December for you with regards to your career, where you work, what you're doing with your career, and see if you can alleviate any of that. <clears throat> if you're due to, say, re-sign something or reactivate something, um, just pay attention to all the details, right, before you sign off on things. Um, this could bring in an element of a whole bunch of things. So Sagittarius can rule things like publishing. It can rule the law. It can rule foreign places, foreign things, uh, university settings, especially doing advanced degrees. Uh, but it's also, you know, Sagittarius also looks at meaning in life. And so I'm just wondering here if that's, that you're going to be wrestling at this new moon, that maybe you want to make a new start in your career because you don't feel you have meaning in your life with regards to the career that you're doing. And that's okay. I think with the whole Neptune element, even though it's a square, it's a wide square, um, it'll certainly be going uh, direct at this point. I would say develop some kind of meditation practice if you can, if you've not got one. If not, and you don't know where to start, just get out in nature somehow. Uh, and that's going to a forest, that's going to a lake, going to the ocean, that type of thing. Or just getting out into nature may really help alleviate any difficulties at the new moon for you and help you actually see your future as you work through some of those challenges. Mm -hmm. I feel that pretty strongly. Now the full moon in Cancer, well that's positive for you, that's a trine because that's a fellow water sign, right? And so this trine is going to be beautifully aspected for you and it's going to be beautifully aspected for you where? In your fifth house. So Pisces, you could have some pretty awesome things happen here towards the end of December uh, with regards to any creative projects, if you have a new love, say, starting up, this could support that. Anything regarding your children could be up for a positive boost here. And even though it's a full moon, it's also a culmination, an ending. But think about the full moon, what it does. It shines this big light. And so that could be what happens at the end, towards the end, or just after Christmas that you get this big light put on one of those areas of your life. Maybe you truly are tying up some kind of really cool creative project at this time. Um, and that's what you do at the full moon and you're very happy about it. Now, the moon, the, the, the Mercury retrograde uh, will sextile you um, because it starts off in Capricorn and it'll feature your 11th house. So I'm thinking that you may, um, certainly at the start of the Mercury retrograde, Decide that you've got to look more carefully at the social media platforms that you're using or not using at this time. Uh, friends may bring opportunities to you as well, including the groups that you have. You could also get the opportunity with that Mercury retrograde as you're considering things um, to have some wish or dream of yours come true. And maybe that's tied into that whole creative project. Because that 11th house is opposite the 5th house, right? Uh, where the full moon activates. So, yeah. I mean, the other thing that could happen too for those Pisces that are in love, um, this could just kind of bring things together very sweetly with regards to if it's a friend that you decide is much more than a friend. Uh, this could bring in a whole reconsideration of the friendship and have you looking at it more from a love standpoint, right? Take care, Pisces. Okay, so when we look at a little peek into January 2024, and know that that is going to be um, my next video, will be for the year ahead 2024. Um, but I will also probably do a little bit of a focus on 2024 when I do my... Um, my first live video, which will probably be in December uh, of this year. Stay tuned for that. <laughs>
Anyway, January 2024 brings an end to the Mercury retrograde and it goes direct on the 1st of January at 22 degrees of Sagittarius. So look to see, do you have something at 22 degrees of Sagittarius? Yes, I do. <laughs> I have my Mercury exactly at 22 Sagittarius. So I'm expecting some forward positive movement with regards to some kind of communications. Um, maybe the way I communicate. Maybe I'll be dealing with people overseas myself. Pluto will conjunct the Sun at zero degrees of Aquarius. That's a notable um, thing to pay attention to. And then we're going to have a new moon in Capricorn and a full moon in Leo in January next year. Please take care of yourself, everybody. I'm sending everybody lots of love. And we will talk to you soon. Bye for now.